Welcome everybody to Pinkies Up. <laughs> We're very excited because as you can see, we've got a summary looking episode today. If you're new here on Pinkies Up, we aim to answer questions that regular people like me have about wine. And on this episode, we're answering, does all rosé taste the same? Welcome to Pinkies Up, a series where we answer questions normal wine drinkers like Bridget have about wine. I'm Nick, and I'm here to answer these questions in a way that makes sense whether you drink your wine with your pinky up or you drink it in a solo cup. Let's see what's going on this month. Hello, everybody. You heard Bridget. We're figuring out, does all rosé wine taste the same? And uh, it's all pink. A lot of people think just pink tastes pink. It looks the same. (laughs) A lot of people think pink is sweet, which white Zinfandel is sweet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, you know, this is all dry rosé. As I like to say, delightfully dry, resoundingly refreshing. (laughs) Drosé? (laughs) Drosé! Okay, so this already brings up a question. Is it all dry? Is all rosé dry? So dry means how much sugar is left in the... um, the juice okay. after you, in the wine, after you ferment it. So you have a very sugary grape juice that you introduce yeast to, and the yeast turns the sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Okay. <laughs> and you can stop the yeast from fermenting all of the sugar and leave a little bit of residual sugar in there to leave some sweetness. Okay. So these all are on the scale of where we'd say dry. So it doesn't mm. mean it's like bone dry, which is zero grams of residual sugar. These are mostly going to have a little bit of residual sugar in, okay. but they are what we would call dry rosés. Okay. I've got to say, before we get into tasting any of this, my assumption is that, yep, all rosé tastes the same. The only difference is if it has bubbles or not. <laughs> so we have five different rosés from uh, five, four different countries, and one sparkling, one in a can. They're yep. very typical rosés. Some of them have the same grapes. Some have different. So we'll see, does the same grape from a different place taste a little different? Do different price points taste different? Does bubbly taste different? Okay. Um, but before we get started, do you know how they make rosé? No idea. <laughs> so these all come from red wine grapes. Oh, so great. This first one that we have, the Fleur de Mer, comes from the Côte de Provence, which mm-hmm. is where most people think of rosé, Provençal rosé. You think of yep. uh, Brad and Angelina Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie's thing. <laughs> that is not the, what I thought of. They're but broken yeah. up. Miraval, that is from oh, Provence. So oh. this is kind of the stereotypical, <laughs> crisp, clean, refreshing rosé. Okay. And this comes from grapes that, red wine grapes that you'd usually seen grown in the south of France, Grenache, Syrah, Mouvedre, Carignan, and so things like that. And red wine gets its color from the skins. So a normal red wine, you let it sit on the grape skins and the juice extracts color, flavor, tannin from those skins. Okay. You do that for days, if not weeks. For rosé, you let it sit on the skins for a matter of minutes. Last time. Oh, really? Literally minutes. Whoa. It's called skin contact method of because there's three ways you can make rosé. These are all called skin these all come from skin contact method except oh. the sparkling one, which is a blend. Mm. And <laughs> um, the skin contact method is just let it get a little bit of color, a little bit of tannin. And a little bit of flavor. So okay. you have your red wine grapes, but just oh, lighter, more refreshing, not as heavy. Well, and I do, like, <laughs> this. as always, I think in every episode, I say, this is a dumb question. Um, I feel like, has rosé been around? Is it relatively new? I feel like in my life, at least, it's become popular as of late in the last few years. So rosé has been around forever. It okay. probably huh. was made before red wine. Oh. Because you didn't have to let it sit on the skins as long. So without refrigeration, oh. it was a faster way to make wine safely without it spoiling, fruit flies getting all over it, all those type mm. of things. So this was probably an earlier type of wine okay. than red wine where people just figured out, oh, a little Keep bit of skin it. contact. We have it. And then they went longer and longer and longer. And then you had dry red wine. But huh. so this is rosé has been along for a long time, especially in Europe. In America... <laughs> <laughs> nah, it just became cool. <laughs> we associated dry we we associated pink wine with white Zinfandel, especially since mm-hmm. the 80s when Behringer figured out the That's white Zinfandel ex- thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um so, <laughs> you know, it's been unfortunate, but really in the late 2000s as sound culture kind of picked up cuz rosé is just so good for food, light lighter food, the summer all types of thing. If you don't want white wine, something with a little bit more body to it. So, kind of picked up in the late 2000s. Gain steam in the early 2010s. We were ahead of it. We used to do a huge seasonal thing, and now it's just a year-round thing that I think yeah. people are aware of. Okay, that's interesting. So, yeah, so <laughs> this one's sense. called Fleur de Mer. It's from the Cote de Provence in France. This is your stereotypical rosé. For, 
like strawberry, watermelon type of flavors mm, yeah. on their nose. For the record, I did always associate rosé with white Zinfandel as well. And I was like, oh, no, thank you. It's just crisp, mm. clean, delicious. It's delicious. about $15. Mm-hmm. All of these wines are under $15, very affordable. I also associate rosé very much with this time of year. So Spring, yeah. As we're recording, it's May. Um, it's perfect for Mother's Day. You know, they're pretty, right? Sure. So, like, they're great Easter and rose, or and Mother's Day and, I don't know, also into summer when so it's hot out. what do you taste in this one? Mm. I think this is an issue for me with rosé is I can't actually pick out like bold fruit flavors like I can in red wine. Yeah, and it's because it's less skin contact. It's supposed to be a less gentle one. It's like delicious, but I have a hard time pinpointing any certain things. You'll get more of that like strawberry watermelon thing out of it usually than you would from the red wine, which strawberry and water, strawberry, you might get out some red wines, especially Grenache like this one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Watermelon you wouldn't usually expect to get, Mm -mm. but... And both don't have a ton of flavor as fruit. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like yep. in-season watermelon, great. But if you get watermelon out of season, it just kind of tastes like water. So this is made. This is great. This is the stereotypical one. I wanted to start with this to okay. just say, if you've ever had a rosé, this is probably the type of rosé you've had. Mm-hmm. You'll see rosés yeah. from the south of France that are going to be this basic Grenache type of recipe. Grenache is a great grape for making rosé. Because it grows like a weed, uh, <laughs> gives you a really great yield, and it has enough flavor in it that a little bit of skin contact will give you what you need without being overly tannic. So it's a great grape for it. So you'll see that a lot. Wait, is, is are there some rosés that are, have a lot of tannins? So they do make rosés out of Cabernet Sauvignon, Malbec. We've had those in the past. I don't have any now. They're honestly not pleasant in oh. a lot of cases. <laughs> because you get... <laughs> And I was like, oh, I should go find get one for Bridget. Sam. I know. I was like, <laughs> get a cab rose. <laughs> but they just, they aren't that popular. Um, some of it's economics. You can make more money selling sure. dry Cabernet than rose Cabernet. <laughs> yes, I bet. Um, whereas Grenache, you're, you know, it's the yeah. same amount. So economically, it works fine that way. <laughs> but they're, they are out there and they just, they're a little they're just weird. Not great. I'm going to be honest. They're a little weird in my opinion. So d- maybe are, rose does taste different. <laughs> they do. Those ones definitely taste different. And that's why I was like, maybe I should, br- but that's like a cheat code. It's like when we do a wine pairing and we're like, oh, P.S. It works great with champagne. Yes. Yeah, everything. So I okay. thought we'd try to do more stereotypical. Yep. Usually you use uh, lighter flavored grapes. This next one we have is the Borsal. Um, oh, I feel like I'm going to drink this out of my teacup. I think you should. <laughs> this feels like a. I wore my floral shirt today. It's springy. <laughs> so this one's Spanish from Bodegas Borsal, and this one's Garnacha. Okay. So same yep. grape, but same grape. Spanish instead of French. Spain is a little hotter climate. Okay. So you should theoretically get some bolder, bigger I, flavors out of this one. I felt that. I'm glad you said that. Just so, from smelling it, looking at it, I've kind of, that's, that was like, mm, I bet I'll be able to pick something out. <gasps> hmm. It does taste, uh, this is, it, da- it tastes more bold, um, which of course I like, but I also want it to be, I want bolder to be colder. <laughs> ah. I don't know if that's like a, a thing. Well, but. this also has more alcohol in it. This one's 14%. The French one's 13%. You mm. can see darker color. Yeah, I like it. So this. extracted more flavor. Okay. From Spain. Okay. And because it's warmer, that's where yep. we're, why we're getting these kind yep. of bold You get flavors. more sugar in the mm. grapes, the riper they of get. Of course. I want the one. More alcohol, <laughs> more flavor. So yeah, to me, mm. this doesn't have quite as delicate. Yeah, Like you not. lose that watermelon type of flavor yep. and you start picking up, I don't want to say this in a bad way, but like cherry Robitussin flavor <laughs> where you get I cherry like flavor, better. but it's like a concentrated cherry flavor not quite yeah it yeah it's it's a fake cherry flavor it makes you think of fake cherry flavor oh, not in a bad disgusting that. way though no it's not disgusting because i would gag with that i prefer this um it is heavier so you know great not a huge your... difference though really no no i think if i don't know i can't stop looking at it and it looks very <laughs> it looks very like, different it is much darker and you're like yes this looks exactly how it tastes but no the flavors are very similar ones just a bit Got more oomph. A <laughs> little bit more oomph this one. A little bit more alcohol. Okay. So, but I'm still the same great. And that's what I wanted to do on this one yep. is did you think? I mean, yes, I think there's the flavor. No, the like, what is that? Mouthfeel? Yeah, mouthfeel. <laughs> the oomph. <laughs> can we make oomph a new deciding factor for wine? <laughs> All right. Now, this is a fun one. Okay. So this is hogwash. Comes to us from California. Yeah. Uh, I talked with Scott. 
the enterprising, amazing sales rep for this. Talked to him this morning, and here's <laughs> what he had to say about the great blend on it. He says, it's nearly all Grenache. Okay. So same, same. as yep. this, but this comes from California. It is a lower alcohol, 12%. Okay. And he says they add in just a dribble of Pinot Noir. A dribble. But what they do is they pick the grapes at a lower sugar level, so you get a lower alcohol level and a little bit more freshness to it. So oh. the Provence one had 13%, and this is 12%. Okay. So should be, again, kind of in the same range of flavors. <laughs> But, I'm, I'm really glad you picked a canned rosé um, without even talking because it is one of those, like, it's a summer wine. It's a boat wine, you know? We Spring, drink a summer. ton of this in my household. Yeah. Um, canned rosé is great. Yeah. It's better than canned red or white yeah. wine. Cans do really well for wine for about a year and a half, and then quality does start mm. to degrade. So something like rosé where you want to drink it fresh, it's perfect. Also a little less oxygen contact. It's just great. This is drinkable. <laughs> but it, it has a little more oomph than the first one, too. Yeah, me. and I yeah. think that's adding in the Pinot Noir. The Pinot Noir has a little bit more flavor to it. It's a little bit more premium grape. Yeah, I do think that in this case, I like Pinot Noir. <laughs> so we'll get <laughs> to that. You're, you're, my issue, if you have not listened or you're new to me, um, Pinot Noir as a red wine bothers me because it's it doesn't have enough oomph, you know? And I think... You know, he said it's just a dribble. I think you get that some dribble. kind of like tea leaf notes in this and a little bit of herbaceousness in addition to that nondescript light red fruit flavor. And that gives it just mm. enough to make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, it does. It, it is it just has a little more interest. But if you're just drinking it, I don't think there's... Not huge differences. There's not huge differences. You can definitely taste the difference when you try them. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I'm really trying here to come up with differences, guys. <laughs> but if you're tasting, if you're looking for a Grenache-based mm. rosé, they all are pretty similar. And like you, all of these are good. You could go to the store and not be disappointed purchasing any of these. You know, if someone's like, hey, grab a bottle of rosé, all of these are exactly what one might expect, I think, right? Yeah. And they're all good. We, like I said, we, uh, Borsal is a great value. We sell a ton of Borsal, really recommend it. We kind of shift through what we have from the Cote de Provence in the store because they're really all the same. <laughs> um, there are some super premium versions, uh, that's the one with the flower on the bottom of the bottle? Yeah, that's Mirval is really the one that's really well known, and that's 25 30 bucks a bottle. That's beautiful. <laughs> I've I, had, that's, um, that's Cote de Roses. Oh, that's Cote de Roses. Thinking, yes, yeah, and I'm that sorry. one's like 20 bucks a bottle. Okay. I've had a lot of them. Yeah, they're not, they're not great. And I tell you, if you want to spend some money on a super premium bottle of wine, spend it on red or white wine. But I've got to say, I do think that, rosé is i mean it's a visual thing right yeah it started for sure. it's a great gift from that so the bottle with the rose stamp on the bottom that's a great gift and it's a great flower vase afterwards it, that's great marketing well do you remember we we, <laughs> we just did. did a virtual tasting where we had yes. a 175 dollar bottle of rosé oh yeah oh my god so think about that one would yeah. you say that was tasting that different no and that's the thing I, that's a really good note that i'm not sure gourmet rosé <laughs> Cormet rosé, maybe not a thing, but it is. So it's a great gift because it's beautiful to look at, which which is why like people that are new to wine, when I didn't know much about wine, you're buying from the label. You're yep. buying from what the bottle looks like. <laughs> so that was the first three. For this episode, I wanted to keep mm. those kind of tight yep. where the grapes are about the same, but they come from different areas, different alcohol levels. And it kind of gives a, you know, you can taste three Cabernets from California and they can taste vastly different. Yes. Done these it. are <laughs> th similar. Yeah. These are three <laughs> wines, basically the same grapes, different regions even. You know, you taste a Cabernet from Chile, California, France. If you don't know the difference between those three, you're not that good of a wine drinker. You just drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> you just drink. So, but these three, you could be like, I don't know. Yeah. It's okay. Rosé. It's, yeah, if you're not drinking them next to each other and talking about the flavor notes. <laughs> All right. Now, this is where it's going to get a little interesting yeah. and we might see something different. I'm nervous here. So this one's called La La Olivetto. Okay. La Olivetto. It's La just Olivetto. an L. Uh, <laughs> but this is a family producer in California. Okay. And this is another skin contact one made from Pinot Noir. So, okay. Uh, Only P So no Grenache. 100% Pinot Noir. Okay. So a premium grape. Uh, actually, a really mm. great price on this. A lot of the times... Um, you know, when I said what Scott said about picking the grapes early, you can use immature grapevines for your rosé, where grapevines take about five years to make fruit that is really usable in wine. Okay. Dry table wine. 
You can use the immature fruit for sparkling wine because you don't need the flavor as much because you get it out of the bubbles. And you can also use it for rosé because you don't need to yeah. pull as much flavor. So a lot of big Pinot Noir producers, will, as they're replanting vineyards, they'll take those blocks off huh. and use the young grapes for rosé. Wow, this is fascinating. I'm nervous we're not going to have a clear-cut answer at the end of this episode. So this is Lalo Valto. Uh, 100% Pinot Noir. It's from Russian River Valley, which makes really big, bold Pinot Noir, really flavorful Pinot Noir. And I thought this would be a great one to see. <laughs> this is a Bridget Do one. Do you like? <laughs> bold, bold. Is there any difference in the bottle shape? Is that just aesthetics? Just aesthetics. <laughs> so they picked, this is what we call an Alsatian bottle or a Riesling bottle. It's a very tall, yeah. fluted one. Most of the other ones have kind of that Chardonnay bottle, a mm -hmm. little bit wider. You you know expect Chardonnay to mm -hmm. come in it. Just aesthetics. Yeah, it honestly looks more expensive. It does look yeah. more expensive. Anyway, just curious. <laughs> so usually you use lighter red grapes, Pinot Noir, Grenache, and so on, with Vedra Syrah. Um, not Cabernet and Malbec because you don't want a ton of uh, tannin in it. But Pinot Noir is a more flavorful grape than Grenache. So do you think you get a little bit more flavor out of the Pinot Noir one? More than flavor. The um, also like a little bit of a, this makes it sound bad, and it is not bad, but almost like a little bit more of a bite at the end. Yeah, for sure. Is that have a term? <laughs> Like in red wine. Yeah, tan. I think there's a little bit more acidity in this yeah. one. Um, I think they put a little bit more care into mm. producing this one. Uh, smaller production, family owned. Maybe they're farming these grapes specifically for rosé production. It's. Uh, this has also not, got a little bit of sweetness on the end. Um, this has got a little bit of residual sugar on the end. See, I think because I'm not it? used to it. Yeah, this is 13.1. This is, they put some, so this is 13.1%. So. Mm. Russian River Pinot Noir, you'd usually expect 14 to 15% okay. alcohol. Yeah. So, so just. Yeah. So this is, they left some sugar in it or it's really immature fruit. Okay. So I always feel bad saying things like this, but we're here to just like be blunt and get in, and explain it. I think that this would be and is a, a great wine. <laughs> I just, it's not what I expect from rosé. So instead it just tastes a little watery. And I think, yeah, I think this you know? one, it definitely has a lot more acidity. Yeah. This one's better when it's 100 degrees outside than mm, the first yeah. three, which are good when it's 60 degrees 60. outside. Yeah, that's a great, okay, I, that's a great example. Because yes. this is just like so much more acidity. Yes. Boom. I agree. I'm just like so perplexed by this because this is not at all what I really like. It, it looks similar. It looks just like that other 13% bottle, but it tastes different. And yeah, the... The fruit on mm. this one, to me, again, is kind of that more nondescript yeah. Robitussin cherry type of flavor. Mm -hmm. Which than, is just like the other one. Yeah, than any mm. specific red fruit. The Flutamere, I think you get more of the, like, kind of watermelony type of thing to it. Yeah, I don't know it's about just, this, Nick. This one is... <laughs> I like, don't love this. It's different. Yeah, it is different. But it's not super distinctive. Yeah, this is a hard one. You think about... Vegetables, for instance. Young carrots, young tomato. You know, think about... You, tomatoes, you, you, yes. Yeah, so think about... You talked about the watermelon out of season. Yeah. So tomatoes out of season... Are just okay. They're then, they're okay. They're yeah. indescript. They kind of have a flavor, but you're hard-pressed yeah. to say it's a tomato flavor. You're like, hmm. Grown in the dirt, picked at the ripest of ripe times, heirloom tomatoes. Those have flavor. Yeah, and are distinctly different. Rosé... It's never going to be that great. It's a short skin contact, which is what gives wine the flavor. It's not necessarily the best grapes on an estate. So you're going to get kind of these indistinct flavors. Yeah, this is, this is hard because normally we do this and it's very easy to be like, yuck, this tastes like dirt. This tastes like chocolate. This tastes like whatever. Where, yeah, here you're kind of like, yeah, there's some kind of fruit. Um, it's different. These, these it's, four have all been different, but... Different but, in indescript ways. And different because we're standing here drinking one after another. <laughs> the only difference is bubbles. <laughs> Speaking of bubbles. It's got to be. <clears throat> we usually try not to do huge mass market wines on these things. But here we are. Here we are. We have Josh Prosecco Rosé. Love now, me some Josh. this is an interesting one because <laughs> Prosecco DOC rules, which is the Italian government rules on how you can make wine. Uh, recently changed to allow rosé. So this is, oh. uh, let me pull up the Wait, exact Wait, why thing. couldn't you before? Or that's what you're pulling up? Um, because. Because <laughs> rosé is not wine? or <laughs> Because it was not traditional for oh. um, Deutsch wine. <laughs> uh, it wasn't traditional. And 
basically the Italian wine rules are kind of very backwards and kind of really corrupt. Um, <laughs> awesome. So it's really hard to get changes done. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, this website got changed and it's very hard to navigate. Um, oh. Should I have this up ahead of time? Sorry, guys. That's all right. Here um, we are. Wow, this is terrible. <laughs> uh, Josh Prosecco, great. So I think this is like 95% glare and 5% Pinot Noir. Um, so this is a different type of rosé. This is a blend. Oh. So usually, like I said, um, you're going to make your rosé by just doing a short skin t- contact. There's a second type of... Uh, I mean. Opening this, I got it. <laughs> second type of production called sanguine, uh, which is a French word. Can you guess what that means? Sanguine. Blend. Blood. Ah, close. Yeah, like sangre de Cristo. Oh, um, so blood. you literally, it, it means you bleed off the things. So this happens in a lot of red wine production. And you'll see, this is where you'll see some of the Cabernet Rosés. Okay. Mm. Uh, especially as global warming's happening and, and things are getting more alcohol, more flavor uh, in places like Calistoga, Napa Valley. You'll take and make your red wine and remove 10% of the juice out of it. Okay. And that will concentrate the flavors more in your red wine. And mm-hmm. that juice that's remaining is pink. And you just oh. make a rosé wine that's out of it. That's the alternative to the skin contact? Yep. And oh. then the third one is blending, where you make a white oh. wine and then add in some red wine. Ooh, this is fascinating. Some people would call that blush. That's, yeah, okay, great point. What is the difference between blush and rosé? Just how it's made? Yeah, so blush is you add red wine yeah. to a white wine. That's um, crazy is that like so there's not really that much of a difference between blush and blend but really it's kind of a intent thing usually blush means it's going to be a little sweeter where rosé means you Mm, still try to keep it dry so one question is blush wine like still a thing it is i feel like i haven't heard that in a long time it is okay um there's some good blush wine but a lot of it's garbage yeah Um, a lot of it kind of my second question is like (laughs) fruit stuff that if you like fruit wines, you're probably going to like it. And if you don't, you're not going to like it. So is that, um, I don't know how to phrase this. Like, is that a way, like, kind of you use your extra crap? Like, oh, I'm just going to mix up these things. <laughs> That's what it feels like. I'm just going to take red wine, white wine, stir them together. And, whoa, look, it's pink. It's blush. What's the good way to say this? <laughs> yes, is what he's saying. <laughs> the good way to say it is, uh-huh, Reputable basically. wine producers generally do not do that. Understood. And I'm, again, this uh, podcast is just about getting to the point and answering the question. I do not question the methods of the winemakers. I don't know enough. Generally, if you're going and doing that, it's because your goal is to make sweet wines for people that just want some fruity something. Something with with alcohol. alcohol. (laughs) Some kind of Um, juice with alcohol in it. And, you know, that's not really... (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) I I support that if... (laughs) I like, I like, okay, so I don't I support that. I don't drink wine to get drunk. Sometimes it happens, but <laughs> you know, if I just need alcohol, I'm going to go to vodka. Like, Ooh. let's be Ooh. honest, you know, if you just need to get your drunk on, just go to vodka, put <laughs> tequila, get some flavored vodka. might as well just go to tequila. tequila. <laughs> now, um, so I, I want wine to be an agricultural product, to be something that has <laughs> some flavors that I enjoy and is something more than just alcohol. Now, if you want it as just alcohol, that's fine. And blush wine, I think, is made for the people that okay. want it as just good, alcohol. Good. So I don't want to denigrate anybody's drinking habits or the producers, but I'm telling you, not my cup of tea. <laughs> blush wine does not, not sound my like cup of tea. tea. Cup of nice. Tea. <laughs> not my teacup of sparkling rosé. But anyway, yeah, so this is this is glare peanut oil. I mean, this is delicious. Together. Okay. And um, Prosecco is always a little sweeter, so this has a little bit of sweetness to it. I could drink this all day because... Why very not? fine bubbles. We've talked about yeah, it is how Prosecco fun. has, um, it's a forced carbonated product. It's not a naturally carbonated product. Yeah. So a little finer bubbles. But I think for rosé, that's perfect. I, yeah, I would prefer normally more bubbles, but agreed. I feel like I feel like often, or is it always that rosé only has these fine bubbles? Or no? So. I never feel like it's as I, bubbly as I want it to be, but. It's, man, this is going to sound really, really douchey. Excellent. Have you ever I had, always try to get to this point. Have you ever had like a legitimate, somebody's very good rosé champagne? Probably not. Okay. Who, if, if I have, it was with you. So you tell me. You haven't. <laughs> no, my sisters and I probably buy the $12 bottle. So the very good champagne France houses. <laughs> so usually you have like a, a tete de cuvee 
which which is your you know ridiculous bottle. Then you have a vintage bottle, and then you have your normal blend. That's your kind of everyday thing. It's still out of most people's everyday price point, but they call it their everyday. Thing. Every day. Out of my everyday price every point. Every day, fifty dollars. Someday. Bottle. Someday. <laughs> Um, and the rosé bottles are usually kind of at that second tier price. They're a great quality. You use Pinot Noir in them more to give them the red fruit flavors, to give them the pink color, which is more expensive to grow than Chardonnay, sure. which is the other main grape in, in Champagne. And those are the big Champagne bubbles. <laughs> okay. And those so, are like super flavorful, super delicious. They I, taste like strawberries and cream. Oh. And okay, um, so. they're really good. You find one of those bottles, Nick. I'll find one. I'll have <laughs> it here tomorrow. Next year, Mother's Day. Um, <laughs> That's perfect. Anyway. <laughs> so this like is um so most normal everyday drinking yep. type of rosé with bubbles. The south of France has some really good uh, Cremant that you could look for. Uh, Cremant de Lemieux is a really great sparkling rosé um, that's going to have a little bit bigger bubble. Okay. Um, you can find rosé cava that is mm-hmm. really delicious, yep. very cheap, um, and it's going to have bigger, bolder flavors. Okay. And then the rosé Prosecco is going to be crisp, refreshing Lighter flavor like this. And like, what is this Josh bottle run about? 15 bucks. 15, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's great. I So again, because of when I normally drink rosé this time of year, usually really Mother's Day is when I think about it a lot. I want bubbles because it's a celebration. It's kind of like the start of spring or like, hey, we're kickstarting summer. I don't know. I, I love the bubbles rosé. Bubbles, bubbles everywhere. Always. I mean. Bubbles, bubbles in my hair. <laughs> Sorry, that's a book that Simone is reading like, right now. Feels it's like a, a Sesame book. Street book. <laughs> Bert and Ernie bubbles. Mm. It's called Bubbles Bubbles. So just go. In case bubbles, you're wondering. Bubbles. <laughs> read that book. Excellent. Um, anyway. Okay. Well, so I picked, I wanted to pick five yeah. wines that were all under $15, very affordable. Mm-hmm. I wanted to keep it kind of a tight set because yes, I could have gotten something like a Tanat Rosé. That's yeah. just a tan and bomb. You'd be like, yeah, this tastes different. <laughs> or the cab. Or, yeah, yeah. But these are what you're going to find. Yep. This is, if you go to someone's Rosé section, the majority of it is going to be Grenache, Pinot Noir, things like that. Lighter red wine, uh, yeah. lighter red grapes that are made into rosé wine. Yeah. Um, to answer the question, <laughs> does all rosé taste the same? I'm going to go with a soft yes. Um, meaning that is not a bad thing. I wanted to have my mind changed. A soft yes, meaning like you are safe with any rosé you get. If someone says bring a bottle of rosé, don't stress about too much about where it's from, what it is. Pick one that's made with... It, that it's Grenache based, I would say. Yeah, it's kind Grenache. of the traditional what yep. people expect. South of France. Rather mean. than this, what is this one? The Pinot? Yep, Pinot so, Noir. Yeah, so I would say go with a Grenache if you want kind of your like, this is what rosé is when people ask for rosé. Everybody's going to have that. It's yep. the standard. It's The French really invented it, spread around the Mediterranean like yeah. so many things. <laughs> I agree. It's a soft yes. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it definitely tastes different. It's a fun comparative tasting. Mm-hmm. If you and some friends want to get together together, each bring yeah. a bottle of rosé and say like, oh, this is where this is slightly different and I can taste the differences. But for all intents and purposes. They're all good. Great to drink in the spring or summer. Get one with bubbles if you're celebrating. <laughs> don't spend a lot of money on them. Please yeah. don't. Yeah. Unless um, it's this bubbles one you're talking about. <laughs> that's a different thing. <laughs> that's but another day. Just please don't yeah. spend a lot of money on it. We've stopped stocking stuff over $20 just because there's there's no point to it. Um I mean, those, they definitely are better, but <laughs> I, uh, none of 20, these are bad. Like, yeah, the, like I could drink exactly. all of this. The difference between a $25 bottle of rosé Grenache and $10 bottle of rosé Grenache compared to $25 red Grenache and $10, yeah. Big, it's not yeah. worth it. It's yeah. just not worth it. So they all taste pretty much the same. They're all delicious. They're not supposed to be serious wines. You need to drink them yeah. in a year, 18 months. Mm. What happens after that? Does it get like a little acidic, like acidic, it just and just loses vinegar? all the flavor. They're so oh. lightly flavored, so little alcohol. There's so what keeps wine. Um, so there's three things that keep wine age worthy: um, acidity, which rosé doesn't usually have a ton yeah. of. Um, you know, we had two: the Lalavetto yep. and the Hogwash had a little bit more. Those will last longer. Alcohol is a preservative. Higher alcohol wines last longer. These are not high alcohol wines. <laughs> And They're then great tannin. day drinking wine. Tannin is the other thing that mm, will preserve yep. wine and keep it. These have very, None. very, very yeah. little tannin. So white wine has no tannin, yeah. um, can have more alcohol, can have more acidity. The wines that have more alcohol and more acidity last longer, not as long as red wine. Red wine like Pinot Noir that has less tannin, maybe more acidity, not a lot of alcohol, moderate amount of time. Cabernet that has lots of alcohol, 
lots, lots of acidity of- <laughs> and lots of tannin. That's the stuff can last forever. Okay. That's great to know. Not that I would keep rosé like yeah, so in these my are, cellar. <laughs> spend 10 bucks, spend 15 bucks, find something from, yeah. you know, maybe you like uh, Italian stuff more. It's called rosato. Maybe you like uh, rosato from España. Maybe you like rosé from France. Maybe you like American rosé. Find what you want, spend 15 bucks. And call it a day. And the other thing is I think, to me, sometimes I struggle if I'm bringing a bottle of wine for a gift or whatnot. You're like, oh, I don't know if they like red wine or white wine. And, like, that's a distinct difference. That is. You're always safe with this. Maybe not in the middle of winter for my style, but. But you can always go with a rosé sparkling wine. Yes. Seriously, always a sparkling wine. Just go with bubbles. <laughs> just always bubbles, okay? <laughs> Man, and again, we come back with just, just pick champagne. Here we are, back with that. So listen to a previous episode if you want to learn more about our feelings on bubbles. <laughs> just bubbles, bubbles everywhere. Oh man, well you know this was great. This is great. I'm I glad thought we you could were going to come in and like trick me and try and be like, yeah, rosé tastes different. No, <laughs> you know we've done tastings where we've had like eight, and you can definitely tell the difference again mm-hmm. when you taste them next. And people, it's I think it's a fun thing to do at home if you're yep. a wine drinker, if you're a wine lover, get some friends over, do it. Yeah, tapas. This is wonderful. A yes. uh, little charcuterie board, whatever you want to do, maybe outside on your porch as you open it up, you will taste there are differences, but. We're back to saying it's <laughs> they're basically all basically the same. So, yeah, I agree. Soft yes. Great. Soft yes. That's the answer on this week's episode of Pinkies Up. Guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, we have our weekly Sunday episodes every month. We do one of these Pinkies Up that is our love of wine. It is. And, you know, again, I get to be a regular wine person asking Nick you know, for a little bit higher level of knowledge about wine, and we hope it helps you pick your favorite wines. So if you listen normally, thanks. We hope you enjoyed the wine episode. If you're new to the podcast because you wanted to get the wine stuff, we talk about wine or beer or some sort of spirit every week, (laughs) plus a lot of fun kid stuff and all sorts of food and just what's going on in the world. We hope you join us every week. Hit that follow button, however you like to listen to your podcasts. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Leave us a comment. You could subscribe, but you can find us at Dinner Plus Drinks Podcast on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks, guys. Have some rosé. Celebrate spring or summer or fall or winter or (laughs) whatever we're in as you watch this or listen. Enjoy. (laughs) And don't forget to always drink with your pinkies up. Cheers. Cheers.